Halloween is almost here this Saturday, so all those ghosts are out there, the goblins, they're in full force. And while those kind of creatures come out only at this time of year, there are some real monsters that you have to deal with almost every day. We're talking about emotional vampires. Yeah, I'm sure you know, and the people that suck the life right out of you, everybody has that person at work. Yeah, and, yeah, or in your life, uh, close <laughs> They're friends. They're not looking at him. Well, Margaret Rall is here to tell you how to shine some sunlight on these downers. How do you do it when you just want to wring their necks? Oh, uh, you know what? I think the most important thing is not to become a victim yourself. Yes. Okay. To these mm. people because they they are emotional vampires because they see themselves as victims. They're victims to their boss or to their kids or to the economy, and you know they get really caught up in these negative whining complaining conversations and yes sometimes you work with them sometimes you live with them <laughs> sometimes they live next door to you and and so you've got to find yourself how do I deal with these people who just leave me feeling drained now I'm guessing this is mildly controversial that it is women <laughs> who become more <laughs> more often the victim of oh, oh I thought death. he was gonna oh, say yeah. that we were the whiners no, 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 I was no, about no, to no, say no, that yeah. okay no because because Women yeah. are indoctrinated from the very earliest ages to yeah. be nice, to be empathetic. Yeah. Maybe it's just that we men. care. Yeah, and, we're good fakers. Maybe, maybe that's we're it. good fakers. Yeah. I, I think so. But, you know, there's a price we pay when we get sucked into these conversations again and again. And there tends to be a pattern to them. You know, those people who are emotional vampires, if that problem went away, they would find another problem. You know, they're very attached to their problems. Mm -hmm. Not all people, but... You know, you meet those people who right. they've always got something to be complaining about. So it's the, always it's like that neighbor, if you go to throw out your trash, you know you're going to be stuck with them for 30 <laughs> minutes yeah. or something like or that. Or you're going down the, down the supermarket aisle and you see them coming, you kind of go back the other way because you're like, oh, I don't want to <laughs> run into them. Right. So the key here is how do you limit your contact or your yeah. emotional involvement? Well, sometimes you can do that. You can walk the long way around and avoid them. And other times you can't. You know, if it's a family member, or if it's someone you're working with and you've got to see them every day. So then what do you do? And I think one important thing is just to make people aware that they are being that way. Some people don't realise the impact that they're having on other people around them. Mm -hmm. they, they're so used to being in complaints. So make them aware? Like you really have to tell them? Well, obviously that takes courage. Yeah, and then it, it takes... That's not easy. It takes some skill not to hurt it their feelings. It does take some skill. And I think letting people know, look, I, I really care about you. I value the relationship I have with you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know if you realize you, you, you're often complaining about this particular issue. And, and I find it leaves me really feeling quite drained. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't want... They cause themselves suffering and obviously mm -hmm. cause other people around them suffering. So just if you're going into that with the intention of... I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm just saying it because I care about you. But and it's I, tough, though. They could take it in the wrong way and just, you yeah. know, Look, and you crazy. have to obviously make the, that judgment there, too. Yeah. And what if it's somebody who's got real serious problems and they're, they're putting these problems on you, whether where it's, a, you know, the, the close friend in the office who's yeah. having an affair and they say, look, I don't know what to do here, or the, yeah. uh, somebody who's an alcoholic or has a drug problem yeah. and they keep coming to you with these problems and you see them repeating the patterns of the past. What do, you, yeah. what do you do in a situation well, like that? Well, so firstly, there's a create the awareness. Secondly, is help to shift their focus from what they don't want to what they do want, from what they can't do to what they can do, and encourage them to take action. So, look, I understand that that's really difficult for you right now, and that's, that's a rotten situation to be in, and I can understand why that's really mm -hmm. causing you to feel sad or upset. You know, what would you like to, well, how would you like this to be? Or what do you think would be a great way to try and address this problem? And shift them out of that complaining space and focusing on what's not right to, well, what can we do about this? Do you think just a lot of people have no clue? They're so caught up in whatever their problem is and they're so good at complaining about mm -hmm. it that they really just can't snap out of it and hear themselves being this and annoying that's person. Where I think that that's where I think we're doing ourselves and them a disservice when we just sit there going, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, you poor thing. And we or just, you hold the phone like this. Like we feed, you have those we, people that we just, feed just talk the their way out of anything. Yeah, well, we're feeding it. We're saying, oh, you know, we're feeding that sense of victimhood and the payoff that they're getting from the problem. But when you say, you know, look, so what can we do about it? Or what, how can I support you in, in, in finding a way through this? 
this situation, whether it's in a, a relationship they're in that's got conflict or, or something else that's going mm -hmm. on. So, and then finally, there's the people who are so hardcore attached to their problems and their complaints that you just have to set boundaries mm. and say, you know what, obviously this person is not willing to address it, they're not willing to change. You also kind of need to pick and choose, don't you? If, if I want to listen to this person or if I want to help them, because... Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's there's a part of you getting pulled in and or, or pulled down with them. Yeah. Well, for the you ask yourself for the sake of what? How much do I care about this person in this relationship? And sometimes we really do care and we really want to help them work through it. And other times we make the judgment. You know what? Uh, this is your thing, mm -hmm. and I, I really don't have the time and energy to invest right. in you it. You could say, I really empathize, and I feel sorry for what you're going through, but this is your problem, yeah. and, and I need to just... Yeah, uh, you and know, you know, I'm, I would, I'd love to support you in doing something about it, but in the meantime, I, I'd really appreciate if you didn't, when, we, when we're talking to each other, if you didn't kind of continually find yourself in those conversations with me. Yeah. Save yeah. It, save in, it for Natasha. Another, on another planet, in, in a time far, <laughs> far long ago, I once dated a woman. Who oh, was unable I, I love to say, love stories. Go who, on. who was unable to say no to her friend's problems. And, yeah. and she'd say, well, this person is just uh, breaking up with the relationship, and I've, I've got to go have dinner with her tonight. Yeah. And then it was the next night it was somebody else. And yeah. until finally it, it would reach a crescendo where she had to go off by herself on a vacation for like to yeah. avoid all friends. She was, just, because it's not just mentally, it's like physically. People can end up sick if they're just giving and giving mm -hmm. and giving. Yeah, and yeah. Like so your friend ended up, the, your ex-girlfriend ended up becoming a victim to all of these people. Mm -hmm. And, and then they're not asking you how you're doing. It's yeah. just blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and, and you know any relationship, there's got to be give and take. Sometimes we do more giving, sometimes more taking. But mm -hmm. if you are constantly giving, and everyone's constantly, you, we teach people how to treat us. And she had probably really trained her friends to just dump on her mm -hmm, all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, Everyone okay. Wants that. Don't do that. <laughs> Put your foot down. Check, we know it. You we know, know it. be the change you want to see in others. And <laughs> don't be the emotional vampire yourself. So, <laughs> Margie, thank you very much. Great advice. I know it's uh, something that uh, a lot of people could use. Just those, in time for Halloween, right? <laughs> that's right. Those emotional vampires are lurking all year long. <laughs> Natasha and I.